Welcome to part three of Bulletproof Forms in Excel, where I show you how to make this really cool form over here that's almost impossible for your coworkers to mess up. So here is a lovely little form that we've created so far. And in the first two tutorials, I showed you how to make the visual interface and apply data validation to it. Here, I'll show you how to apply the conditional formatting in a really unique way and how to attach that to a macro. So we get the cool functionality where if you don't input certain fields and you hit the submit button, you get a count of the errors as well as these red fields indicating that you need to put more data in them. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Here is where we left off in the previous tutorial, rounding out the validation for our form. Now let's go ahead and add conditional formatting. So that's how we're going to get the little red boxes if the user doesn't enter the correct data. So I'm just going to call this column formatting. And I want to add two more little things, error count and show error. Now, all of these fields, remember, all this data over here is going to be hidden when our form is essentially published or finalized. So don't worry about its presence over here and don't worry about this data tab over here. It'll all be taken care of by the end. Now for error count, figuring this out is super simple because we have all of our validation formulas right here. So all we have to do equals count if select the range of values, comma, and then just type. Once you start typing false, it'll fill in. So hit tab, close parentheses, enter. We can see we currently have one error, the name, because one false here. If I delete this, we get two errors down here, three errors. It is awesome. So now we have a very simple way to get the number of errors that are in our form so we can pass it to the macro and then show it in that message box that I showed you previously in the other tutorials. So it's actually so easy to get that. And what we're going to use this for over here, show error, is a switch. It's going to be on or off. Zero will be off. One will be on. So zero acts as false and one acts as true. And we're going to use the macro that we run when we click the submit button to change this from one to zero or zero to one. That way we can have it at zero to begin with. And even though we have errors over here, our conditional formatting will not appear. However, once we click the button and this changes to one, any formatting errors, any validation, sorry, any validation errors that occurred over here will then be highlighted with conditional formatting. So we're going to make conditional formatting formulas over here that check the data validation and if the error should be displayed or not. So that's the trick that we use to display conditional formatting, well, a bit more conditionally. And yes, there are many different ways that you could do this in the spreadsheet, but the way that I'm showing you allows for us to create a very simple macro where almost all of our logic is contained here in the spreadsheet and it puts everything in kind of one place. So remember the premise of this is that you're only going to have your form on this worksheet. We're not going to have any other data here. Technically or theoretically, you could put all of this information that we're going to create here on another worksheet tab and just hide that. But it's just easier if it's all in one place. So let's go ahead and do the conditional formatting now. Conditional formatting formulas, the custom formulas, work just like the data validation. We need to output true or false. So we're going to follow that format using equals and, because we want to check multiple things, and we want to pull in this condition here, false or true, but we want to reverse it. So remember from the previous tutorials with not, not, here you can read the description here, changes false to true, or true to false. So we're just going to reverse it. So not, and then the result of this, that means this will currently now be interpreted as true. Then comma, and just select this cell over here. Then we can hit enter. 
I have a little tiny error here because I forgot to put the closing parentheses. Hit OK to accept the correction from Excel. So we get false right here. Now what false means is that no conditional formatting is going to appear. Now if I change the 0 to a 1, true. Back to 0, false. So this controls if this is going to be read or not, or it will shortly. So all we have to do here is point the second argument to the show error where it will either be 0 or 1, and that will be interpreted as true or false. So here we can see that 0 is interpreted as false and 1 is interpreted as true, and that's standard Excel behavior. Now what I want to do, just to make this go a little faster, is I'm going to put dollar signs around this so we can copy it down without it changing. Then hit enter. Now let's copy this formula down. Let's check it to make sure it worked. Okay, it references that cell and that cell, that cell and that cell. And let's go ahead and delete the extra ones that we do not need. Now we have our conditional formatting formulas. Let's apply the conditional formatting now. Choose the cell that you want to be formatted. Go to conditional formatting. Go to new rule. Go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So move this out of the way. Then format values where this formula is true. So we click in there, and you can click this little guy if you want to get it out of the way. Then click this cell here. Go down. Let's adjust the formatting. Fill. More colors. We want a kind of red like that. Hit OK. OK. Now, what you want to do here, this is important, is you could hit OK, and then you could individually apply conditional formatting to every single one of these input fields, but that takes a little bit more time. I want to make it easier for you. So let's zoom in right here. We have a dollar sign $J$4. Remove the dollar sign from the 4. What this means is we've made a relative cell, a relative row reference for the cell. So if I copy conditional formatting down, the rows will update, but the columns will stay exactly the same, even if I copied it left and right. So just standard relative and absolute cell reference stuff right there. Hit OK. Now with the cell still selected, go to conditional formatting, manage rules. Now we can see our conditional formatting rule right here. Formula equals dollar sign J4, and it applies to equals F4. Now just click right in here for the applies to. You can click this little arrow to get it out of the way. And hold the control on the keyboard, the control key, and click these other cells. You can see the little blinky things on the outside of it. So that's good. Hit enter when you're done. If you hit apply, you can verify if it's working. Then OK. Now you've very quickly added conditional formatting. Like I said, you could do it one by one, but it just takes a long time. So now let's test it out. If I make this guy 0, none of the error highlights show. If I make it 1, good go. Now let's fill it in. Automatically disappears. I got to tell you, I really, really like this form. <laughs> Now let's go ahead and create the macro that's going to make all of this work. So hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window. Go to Insert Module. Let's start with Sub. Let's call it a Validate Form. Hit Enter. So the Sub and the End Sub and the Open and Closing parentheses always have to be there. Now we are in our macro. Now here we really only need to get two things. Hit Alt F11. We need to get the error count and the show error value. 
that's in cell L4 and M4. Right here, let's go ahead and get that. Type error count equals range, open parentheses, quotation mark, L4, close, parentheses dot value. And actually what we're going to do here, we want to type set and then show error, let's call it cell, equals range, and then quote, M4, close parentheses, just like this. So what this has done is it's created a variable called error count, so like a little holder for information, and that is set equal to the value in cell L4. Down here what we did is we set a, a variable, show error cell, equal to the actual cell M4. That way we can do something with it. We haven't decided if we want to get its value or what we want to do with it yet. So later on in our macro, we can use this reference in order to refer to this cell and do something with it. Here we already did something with it. We got the value. Now note that you can name these whatever you want, but make it easy to understand and it'll make your life easier. Now let's check for errors. We're going to use a very simple if statement. If error count is greater than zero, then let's go ahead and do an else and enter and if. So if error count is greater than zero, we are here and there is an error. Else is like otherwise. So if error count is not greater than zero, we are down here. No error. All good. This is very simple syntax for any if statement. You need if, then a condition that must evaluate to true or false, then the word then, then do something, and then you can end it with end if, or you can have this else in here, or you can have more if statements, else if statements. A little bit beyond this tutorial though, we're going to keep it nice and simple. The first thing we want to do, if we have an error, is tell the user that they have an error. Message box, let's spit out the error count so they know how many errors. And in order to combine the variable with text, which is what we want to do now, we use the ampersand or the and sign, then double quotation marks, and then we can put error. And to make our life easier, let's make it work for single or plural. So just parentheses S close quotation mark. Now do you see a problem here? It's kind of an interesting thing, not a big deal, but easy to overlook. When you're going to combine a variable like this with some text, you should always put a space here. The program, Excel, is not going to automatically put a space for you, so make sure that you put the little space right there. Once we've done that, we need to update, go back here, our show error value. Remember, this determines if our conditional formatting shows or not. So we need to update it. There was an error, so it should show which fields have an error. So now we can reference the show error cell and do something with it. Show error cell dot value equals, remember, we use one to show the errors and zero to hide the errors. Here, I'm going to add the comments. Tell the user how many errors there are. Allow conditional formatting for errors to be displayed. Now if we go down here and there is no error, success do something. This is where you'd have your logic that would copy all the data onto another worksheet or another workbook or a database wherever you want it to go. Here, however, I'm just going to have a nice little message box. Success. Down here, turn conditional formatting for errors off. 
Now the reason that we want to do that down here, do you remember how to do that? Nice and easy, show error cell dot value equals zero. The reason that we want to do that here is because when a user has finished entering a value, let's say they want it, they need to enter a lot of values. So they hit submit. Okay, it's not attached yet, but they hit submit and they have an error. And then show error is one, like it is now. And in your macro, what you can do is you can have all the data copy to another workbook and then clear this data here. But if you did not turn off the show error value, once all this data is cleared, the form is going to default to red, just like this. So by switching this back to zero, our form will instead appear like this. So no alarm bells go off, so it doesn't freak anyone out. So we're just setting it back to a default state. I'm gonna undo that so those values come back. And that should be it for the macro. So let's see up here, we get the error count value. Here we get a reference to the show error cell. Here we check if there are errors. Here we output the errors. Here we allow the errors to be displayed by changing the value of the show error cell to one. Here, if we get to here, it means there's no error. So we output a message box of success. You put your own logic here to do a bunch of stuff, whatever you want. And down here, we turn the error display off so the user can enter a new values. Back to the workbook, go to our button, right click, go to assign macro, it's towards the bottom of the list. This window will appear. Click validate form, OK. And now we can test it out, hit submit. Success! Let's cause an error. One error, and it's red. How cool is that? Such a simple small amount of VBA combined with conditional formatting output in this unique way allows you to make such a nice form like this. Now we hit submit, success, and we can test it now. When we clear it, no error messages appear. Okay, we are almost there. We are almost done with the bulletproof form in Excel. The next thing that I have to show you in the next tutorial is how we're going to lock all this down so we don't see this stuff anymore, so no one can edit it, no one can change it, no one can mess it up, no one will even know it's there. Our presentation data, it's all going to be hidden. Everything is going to be tidied up nice and neat and protected from evil coworkers in the next tutorial. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.